Live from the Big G's Pizza Studio on Clark Street, this is Five Songs with Friends, Chicago's Music Discovery Podcast. Tim Atlas is an indie pop and R&B artist from San Jose, California. His influences include Feast, Phoenix, and Hull and Oats. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Tim here with me today. Tim, what's going on, man? What's up, man? Thank you for having me. Dude, I'm so stoked to have you on. Your music is awesome. I think you're making some great stuff. We also bonded before this about our affinity for La Vix, uh, random orange sauce out in San Jose. I also spent some time there, so... You know, a guy who loves burritos and music, like you're a plus in my book, man. Awesome, dude. We were friends on those on those points. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like that, mo- that moment in Step Brothers. I think like, did we just become best friends? <laughs> yup. <laughs> Perfect. I love it, man. Uh, tell me about this music, dude. How did you get started making uh, this type of music? Um. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I'll start just a few years ago. Um, I went to my buddy's studio, and he's just an awesome producer. And I was just like, help me. I don't know you know, who I want to be or, or, or what I want to do. And so, uh, we got in the studio for a couple of weeks and we wrote three different songs and all three were like completely different. But the third song that we wrote was the song called compromise. And, uh, we kind of knew like, okay, this is, this is where we want to go. Like, well, this has, I mean, we hadn't released it yet, but we were just hoping that people would love this song as much as we did. Um, and so we put it out and it's, of like this um, kind of Feist inspired um, like drum machine type song and we put it out and then it hit a million streams in in like a month or so and um, I got a call from Spotify and they were just like hey man like we love what you do we just kind of like stumbled across your release is there anything that we can do to help and we were just like okay so um, a few months later I get back in the studio um, and we basically write a record around um, that song and uh yeah and now here i am just kind of like riding that wave and um he always told me he's like dude every time you pick up a guitar you're doing you're doing kind of like these r&b jazzy chords like why don't we do that in kind of a lo-fi indie type way and uh yeah we've just been building on that sound ever since man and it's just like music that i see myself creating you know 10 years ago and 10 years from now so that's kind of the goal for me Dude, that's so cool. I love it. Like, I love the story of just like you put this thing out there. You don't know exactly what's going to happen, and then it just takes off. So, like, can you kind of go like what's going through your head is like you seeing it just get this traction, and more and more people are finding it and listening to it. And like, what what's like what are you thinking about as that's happening? Um, it's just kind of mind blowing. Like, honestly, those numbers, I don't, I can't, uh, I can't really, you know, I don't understand like how many people that is that actually know the song or, or listening to the song. So. Um, I'm just like humbled and, and just stoked to kind of like have that affirmation to keep creating things that, um, like I really enjoy creating, you know, because like if, if they really gravitated towards a song that I was half on board with, then I wouldn't have that same kind of fulfillment. So it's, it's awesome. I just feel, I just feel super blessed. Yeah, dude. Awesome. I, I think you got the perfect attitude, man. I'm I'm so stoked for you that this is, uh, that you've had such success so early on in your career. I think it's, I think it's awesome, man. And um, can you kind of walk me through like, what is, what is your songwriting process like? Like how do you come up with these, uh, these tunes? Sure. Um, so it's kind of different every time. Um, sometimes I'll start with a guitar and vocals in, in my living room or um, I also have a studio where I just like build kind of a drum loop and um like for this next single I have coming up, I actually started that song on bass, which is kind of, um, mm. sorry, my dog is <laughs> doing a chew toy thing. It's cool. we're, a pro, we're a pro dog uh, podcast, so shout oh, out to okay. dogs out there. <laughs> okay, so um, as I was saying, it's just different every time, man. Um, I think lyrics are always coming kind of last for me. I like to create kind of the soundscape and the vibe. Um and then I'll I'll take a day and and really focus on the lyrics and the melodies and stuff. Awesome, man! I love it. Well, so walk me through this song that we've got today. It's a song called "Hold Up." What uh, is there any kind of story behind it? I know you said I know you said you started it uh, out on bass, but any other kind of things we need to know about it? Um, in terms of like the music, I was I was writing um, for another guy's album um, during that time, and we had an off day, so I was kind of in that headspace and this kind of like 
R and B world. Um, but I still wanted to, you know, keep things keep things me. So I started on bass. I started chopping up some some samples and things like that. And um, I kind of took some influence from like Prince guitars, like super chorusy. Um, staccato type things and um and yeah um the melodies were were top line at first like a lot of those a lot of the words in the song were kind of words I just mumbled and uh they made it into the song <laughs> um so yeah no I really like this one um yeah awesome well let's jump into it let's play it this is a song called hold up by Tim Atlas Play the numbers game, but they all felt the same. Need a no combination. Not trying to get involved. I stick to protocol. Take me on a vacation. So that was Hold Up by Tim Atlas. So tell me, man, like um, this is something I, I've noticed that I, I wasn't exactly apparent to me before I started doing these interviews. But a lot of up and coming artists like yourself also do a lot of songwriting for other people. So like how did you get into that um, that part of, of music of writing songs for other people? Um, well, it was kind of a natural progression. Um, I had always written songs for myself and for bands that I was in. Um, and then after college, um, I had this photography job and it was awesome, but then it was also kind of soul sucking after a while. And, uh, I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I quit and I just wanted to kind of like produce for other artists. So 
it was kind of one of those things where the universe conspires. And as soon as I closed that door, I got like a couple phone calls from some local artists and they were like, Hey, could you produce this record? I'm just like, well, that works out because I just quit my job. And I don't know what I'm going <laughs> to do. Um, so it started there where I was like producing and, and writing with other artists. And now that I'm in LA, um, it's been really awesome because people are always writing here and I get into sessions like a few times a week and you never know if you're writing for yourself or if you're writing for the other person, but it just helps me to, um, kind of keep my chops up and just to kind of immerse myself in another person's world because, um, like the Tim Atlas project is awesome, but I also love dipping my toes in like a bunch of different things. So yeah, man, just being open to, to collaboration has been a big part of me kind of staying sane. Yeah, well, I was going to ask, like, is, um, have there been any moments where you were, you know, maybe writing something for someone else and then you're like, you know what, actually, I want to steal this for myself. Like, has that happened before? Of course, dude. Like, every other week. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, man, I really gave you a, I really gave you a banger. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. So, um, yeah, it's just like, well, the thing is, um, certain people bring that out of you. And when you're in those sessions and that song is for someone else, it's just like, well, I wouldn't have made this song without you. So have fun with it and make sure that like, you know, it gets into the right years. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, I'm sure like it doves tell, dovetails pretty nicely, though. I mean, like I'm sure working with these other musicians helps bring inspiration and new angles that you kind of bring into your own music. Right. I mean, like, have you experienced that at all? Oh, 100 percent, man. Um, yeah. Music is like such a collaborative art. So um Every session that I go into, I'm I'm learning um, from other producers and just like how how people's workflow is, and um, it's pretty inspiring to see some of these people where they're just kind of like sitting in the back while you're producing, and you turn around, you're just like, do you have any ideas? And they're just like, yeah, I already wrote the whole song. <laughs> so it's like nice, you know. It's just um, it's just inspiring to be around like a bunch of different creatives. Yeah, I bet, man. I love it. Well, so are there any um, any shout outs you want to give to maybe people you've worked with or gigged with in the past that are kind of a little bit underground um, that you think people should hear about? Um, that's a good question. OK, let me think. Let me think here. Um, well, we are playing that show in Chicago at Shuba's with Rich Jones and Carlisle. So um, shout out to them. I'm really excited for their set. Um, in terms of music that I've really been listening to. Um, it's a good question. I'm going to have to open up my Spotify. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I mean, there's so like, it's, it's crazy with like all of these different playlists and stuff like there is, we're exposed to more music than ever, man. It's like sometimes hard to keep track of like all this awesome stuff we're hearing, you know? Oh dude. Yeah. Um, people in the heavy rotation would be like still woozy. Um, been listening to a lot of jungle. They're not really like a small band, but they're amazing. Um, Lori Ma is like a big one for me. Um, and then, like, as, as as far as, like, smaller artists, um, Stem Men I Trust has been really cool. Um, sport and um, other one, other one. this band, Jones, uh, they're awesome. So, great songwriting. Um, I look up to all those guys. So. Fantastic. Well, dude, you did allude to it, so let's stop teasing it. You have a show. You're coming to Chicago, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, at Shuba's. Tell us about it, man. So you're you're going you're you're doing tours. Is this like is this your first um kind of like big tour that you've done, or have you been on the road before? Like, give me the details. Um, we've done like a, a tour once before, like a headliner. Um, we actually dropped by the Beat Kitchen last year with um, Emily Blue and Anna Gosta, which was really cool. Um, but dude, Cinco de Mayo in Chicago. What's that like? <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, it's gonna it's gonna be pretty lit. I can already tell. Uh, nice. So yeah, I mean, we've already talked about burritos. We're we're now we're talking about Cinco de Mayo. I think we're gonna have to find a way to get some Mexican food. So it's good. We're gonna yeah. make it happen. Oh my gosh, I'm so stoked. Yeah, I feel like I go to Chicago for food or to play music. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, well, two great things to do in the city, and why not do both actually? Because yeah, you can. Um, yeah, man. But anyway, yeah, so we're doing this tour. Um, we are going to Chicago. We're playing um, some audio tree sessions after the show. And then we go to New York. And then we're actually going across the pond to um, the UK to play the Great Escape Festival, which is basically um, like the South by Southwest of the UK. Uh, and then we have a headliner in 
London after that. And then we have some time off and we're doing some West Coast dates. So I'm really excited. Yeah, man, I'm looking at I'm looking at it now. So it's like you're coming, you're going West Coast to Midwest to East Coast to UK back to the back to the West Coast. So it's like you gotta you're gonna be racking up the miles a little bit here. We are, yeah, man. Um, so I'm like, you know, making sure that I'm staying healthy, <laughs> <laughs> uh, trying to get as much sleep as I can because it's a it's gonna be a, a pretty crazy schedule in the next couple months. Yeah, that's actually a good point. That's something I never think about. But like, I'm sure as a touring musician, like it's hard to get good food in your body. And I'm sure, you're, you know, you're having a few drinks and stuff as you're getting out on the road. So like, how, is there anything you particularly do uh, when you're traveling to like make sure you can keep your fitness kind of in uh, in in shape and in tune? Um, well, it's hard. It's hard because when you go to a city like, you know, Chicago, it's like, well, I just want to eat all the things. <laughs> um, and then, like, the time difference can be rough, too. Like, I have a crazy body clock, so um, it's either I'm waking up way too late or I'm waking up at, like, 5 in the morning. So um, it can be rough, but I am, like, preparing this time around. I got this, like, um, this stuff called Amazing Greens. It's basically just, like, a scoop of powder that has uh, caffeine in it and also gives you all your fruits and vegetables. <laughs> so it's, oh, like, nice. <laughs> things like that where it's, like, easy to do and it makes me feel great um that's awesome and then also uh me and a couple of my bandmates we kind of we like to play basketball so if there's like a court nearby like you know before a show or like on an off day uh, we get a little activity in you know so just little things like that 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 make you feel like half normal um and also yeah, the the biggest part for me is just like sleep. Yeah, for sure. Which I'm sure is is still hard on the road, but um, yeah, you got to yeah. do what you can. Well, so you said basketball. Uh, does that yeah. mean you're a Warriors fan? You're from the Bay Area. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, okay. I am a Warriors fan. Well, so what happens to KD? Man, is he staying or leaving? What do you think? Dude, I don't know. That's a good question because <laughs> like half the time he seems really happy, and then I see all of these like news outlets saying that he is. You know, it's a done deal. He's going to the Knicks. And I just don't – I feel like it really depends on if we win a championship this year. Right. You know? well, come on. If, if we win come a championship, on. Who's going to beat him? I, really, <laughs> I mean, you never know. Did you see them blow that 31-point lead the other day? Yeah, that's true. That was a pretty wacky game. That was intense. It was, yeah, so you just never know because, like, they can be up 31 points and lose, but they can also be down 31 points and then all of a sudden win. So it's just like, it's such a gamble for the Warriors. But I mean, obviously they have so much talent and uh, I just, I, I really hope he stays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How can you not, man? I mean, I the dude's a stud. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> He's crazy. Well, good stuff, man. We'll, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to root for the Warriors in the playoffs as a, as a diehard Bulls fan, but I do, I do, Granted. you know, it, it happens. Someone's when you're at the top, dude, everyone's gunning for you. So yeah, exactly. It, it happens. Lonely at the top, I guess. But uh, I'm super stoked for you to come to Chicago. I'll see you on May 5th. I'll be at your show. Um, I hope everyone else that's listening can make it too because I think it's going to be one of the best shows of the summer. Um, so super stoked to have you, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Cool. Thank you so much, man.